Hi everybody, welcome to New Life Church in Lee. Uh, the re a reading today is uh, uh, about Isaac and Isaac and his two children, obviously Esau and Jacob, and uh, what the difference between their lives. You know, sometimes in our Christian life we have difficulties, won't we? And if between these two there was always issues and there was always conflict. And the reason that is, is because one was a spiritual spiritual side of things and the other fella was, was not a spiritual side of things. Even though he was the oldest, Esau was the oldest, isn't it, in the, in the Bible. So what happens if, if you know from the beginning, uh, they have this child uh, uh, and, and, and the, it, Jacob uh, got, c catches hold of the heel of Esau, doesn't it? And, uh, but that's what he starts off with. So what did God Lord is going to say to us? What in this city of you, you find out that these two were very conflict uh, people of conflict because one is the flesh and one is the spirit. And what Lord wants to say that you know there's always conflict between people who don't know Jesus and people who are religious people or whatever, or a people who are who are born again of the Spirit of God. So here we have you heard the story of Esau. I'm sure. And Esau, obviously, was it said, the Bible says, he was a hunter, he was, he was a man of the field. And he loved, his father loved his, best, his venison, which he gave his stewie or whatever it was. And he went hunting out. So he's a bit like a Rambo-type person. You know, he is a Rambo. We bow and arrow, he'd go out and he spend all day. And he found out he spent running around. And sometimes in our Christian life, people are there who are pleasing the father, but they're, all they're doing is running about. And he comes back tired, and uh, and J and Jacob says to him, "He sent me your birthright." And I think the reason was here. Uh, I don't think he appreciated. It said later when he, he says he hated his birthright. And sometimes we've got to realise if if somebody doesn't want what God has got for them, I'm the one who put my hand up and say, "Yeah, I'll have it if you don't want it." Same with the blessing in the church, isn't it? You come in the blessing and you're this. And people are not interested, you know, they kind of, they're not, I don't know what, they're not interested, okay? And uh, sometimes I say, come on, you know, uh, if they don't want it, Lord, you can give it to me. And he was a man of the uh, a man of the field, they went hunting and he came in and Jacob says, send, send me uh, your birthright. And he said, what happened if this birthright, what good is it to me if I die? And uh, what he does, he makes him potters and stew and sells it. So also it says about, about Jacob, it says he, he was a, a plain man. What it means, he, it was no hers and graces. And they lived in a tent. So that inference between these two people, one lives in a, probably a house or whatever, but Jacob, he lives in a tent. It was a plain man. There was no, it wasn't authentious or anything like that. There was no show on him. But with... With Esau, there was a, all this show. He wanted to prove himself to his father. See? You see, understand that? And his father loved him because of the venison uh, that he, he, he gave him. But Jacob was, because of it, he was probably a mummy's boy, you know, if we want to put, for want of a better word. His mum loved him because he was a gentle kind of a soul. He was, he was not the same. As a matter of fact, he was completely opposite to uh, how Esau was. Uh, and he was a plain man, and they did, of course. He, but I think sometimes there's a difference between sometimes as Christians, you know, we have loud people. The Bible talks about loud. I'm quite loud myself, actually. But you know, I want something from God which will please the Lord. And I'll tell you something, if you want that desire, we have that desire, we want the best thing which God wants for us. And if somebody else is not interested in it, you know. I will have it, and you know, the thing is, you've got to take up that mantle, uh, you know, what somebody's thrown down, and say, right, okay, I'm the first of all, and, but really, I want what God has for us, I want what God has for me, of course, he really, you know, his, his mum says, uh, you know, we'll dress you up like this, uh, he's, he, I've heard Esau's come, it's her plan, you're saying, saying about the mummy's boy, he wasn't bothered about this, but his mum says, dress up, and he's, they go through the, the thing and he thinks it's Esau. Of course, he blesses him. And what happens? Esau comes and etc. And it says from that moment, e Esau hated him and was going to kill him. He said, just waiting. Trouble is, his dad only died 20 years later. So he's a bit in front of the game, wasn't he? And uh, so the, it, Jacob and Rebecca find out and they sent him to Laban. Now, you've all heard Laban. 
in the bottom of Syria, not get, doesn't get a good uh, thing, Laban the Syrian, and he was the brother of Rebecca. So he has to travel, and he goes his travels, he's, he, he, he's, he's tired, and he, and, and he lies down, and he sees uh, uh, angels coming back in a dream, back and forward, up, going up and down, and the Lord speaks to him, and he say, makes a deal with God, and it, the Lord, he makes a deal with him and says, look, he says, you bless me and bring me back to my father's house in peace. I will give you a tent. Not a bad deal, is it? You know, some people don't think of a tent, so we're not going to that. And the Lord blesses, was blessing him and he goes and he finds Laban. You know the other story. I want to tell you now what God did for Jacob, right? What God did for him. You know, the Lord does things for us. And of course, he, he meets Laban and the good, and he sees Rachel, and he, he's, you know, he falls in love with he's in love. He spent seven years working for him. And he says, they, it just seemed like a short time before uh, for the seven years. Of course, Laban diddles him and sends Leah, doesn't he? He sends the other one. He says, it's not me to give the oldest, uh, sorry, the youngest before the oldest. But what it is here, you know, the, the thing is, if anybody diddles you or does not treat you right, God intervenes. And in this situation here, uh, of course, he said, well, uh, you've given me the wrong one, well, you've twisted me. So he says, I'll serve you another seven years for Rachel. And it just said he did, again, I just said, it doesn't seem like a short time for the love he had for Rachel. I remember somebody once saying once, they said, uh, yeah, but we don't believe he spent another seven years. Uh, working for Rachel. That's such an awful statement. The Bible says, for the love he had for her, it would just seem like no time whatsoever. So I don't think it was very nice. As a matter of fact, uh, I got really angry about that one because it's demeaning uh, something of a love. Of a I think if you demean love, I think it's the most per worst personal thing you can do to somebody. Of course, he does that. And then it, it works for the animal, the, the sheep. And God bless him. God's blessing him, friends. God's doing something with him. Because he's seen that he's been cheated with Laban. So God takes his side. And if you look in the Bible, my number seven is my sixes. He worked seven years for Leah, seven years for Rachel, and six years for the cattle. It's two sevens and a six. And that is God working with man. And even though he said, he said to him, I'll give you a tenth, the Lord accepts that. Because sometimes we don't realise if we give Rick a deal, you've got to stick to that deal. Of course, he gives him lots of things and everything uh, 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 he had was was given to, uh, to Laban had, was given was given to uh, uh, Jacob, wasn't it? Everything, the animals, this, and there's nothing left. And Jacob, he, he said, he, he looked at Laban, he weren't like that before. And his brothers, his, his Laban's sons were didn't treat him properly. So I better get out of here. Why? Why this going is good? Of course, he escapes. Now, do something as well, because the Lord told him to go. And when God tells you to go, you've got to go. You know, when you say make a deal with God and says you bring me back to my family, He said that God will be my God. And God wants to prove Himself to you by something you have said, by something agreement you have said, some statement you have made, and you realise. The Lord is up for it, even though sometimes it might not be the perfect, uh, as it were, deal. In God's eyes, it's a deal, and he will stick to it in, in every situation you find yourself. And of course, he, lay, he, he, goes and, he, he goes away, sneaks away by night. See, he looked at all this stuff. And you know there's something, when you've got a lot of stuff, you've got this, you've got that, you've got the other, you've got everything. Sometimes it doesn't bring you... Uh, when you're a spiritual person, because that's what Jacob was, he was a spiritual person. He's looking at all these things. He's done the, the Lord has done. And Laban says, God has blessed you, bless me to Laban for your sake. So he knows all this stuff. And what it is, the Lord has sent him away. But sometimes he said he snook away and, and Laban came after him. And he stopped him, and he said to uh, Laban said to him, "If if you had not, if God had not spoken to me this night, he, he would have made he wouldn't have been so happy in meeting him." And of course, they made. When God speaks to people, when God is on your side, He's only here seven, seven, six. God is involved in. When you involve God, it doesn't matter, matter whatever comes across your path. God will make sure 
If he has promised you and you made a deal with him and you deserve, but the Bible says that, that all things work together for God to those that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So really all things, this situation, that situation, whatever, you cheated, you done this, you done that, and and the Lord is still with you because he's done something for you. Because that deal you have done with him is doing something for you. Aren't you glad about that? And you, but you're not happy. You're not satisfied. You're not, you don't want this. You want to go back. Because family, I'll tell you, blood is thicker than water. Now, of course, he journeys and he's going along. And, and I want to talk now. If he's done something for him, he's not really happy with that. He's not really uh, say, uh, content with that because he's asked the Lord to do him. And unless the Lord brings that, he wants to prove God as God wants to prove him because it's God working. It's the Lord working. I keep saying, guys, God the Father working, the Lord working in our lives and helping us. He wants to build us what we want. he wants us to do. And here we are. He goes, and uh, you see the story, and uh, he, I want to tell you, before God does something in you, for it with you, sorry, he's got to do something in you. And that's the thing. The Bible says that the will well be done in earth. We're a habitation of God. We're nothing without the Lord. Without me, you can do nothing. So really, it's people involving themselves with the Lord, even though they're making a deal, and God backing them up, even though it's just a deal. Do you understand that? Does that mean sensible to you or not? And the Lord wants us to realise, you know, God will take us as we are. At that moment, God will take us as we are. Of course, he comes there and he's, uh, he's uh, he, he, he won't, the Lord said, I want to do something in this fellow's life. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not happy. I want him to do something greater uh, in his life. And of course, he, he, he goes and he's there and he sends a message to Esau. Don't forget, he's been going 20 years again. Two sevens and a six. He's... It's it's all and I don't do anything about Jim Alex. I've never studied it. No, no. But some things they just fly out at you, don't they? I think, goodness me, the Lord is with Jacob. The Lord is with him to help him and see him through. And he's there, and he sends uh, presents to uh, to Esau and sends the people. And what happens uh, is they come back and they said we saw him. And what happened? He said he went. He, we said these are presents from Jacob. He went absolutely mad. Because he says they came with 400 men. He's not coming to kiss him, is he? Or anything like that. He's coming to, uh, to, to cause him harm. So what Jacob does is obviously, he, he breaks them into two bands. He says, that Rachel forward with the others and Leah Le Le after and sends them over the brute. And he sits there behind a rock. Just to me. I can just imagine the Lord getting back, come from heaven and just say, oh, goodness me, it's time he did, we did something in him. Because what we've done something for him, it's not brought any rewards. I want to do something in him. And I'll tell you something, God wants to do something in your life. I don't care what you've been in the church, I don't care about this, I don't care about that. I just thought that as God done, the Lord done something in your life, which will be productive to him, which will bring glory to his name, which will bless other people. I'll tell you something, friend, there's no greater thing in your Christian life. So he's, he's behind a rock, and he's there behind this rock, and he's frightened for his own sake. Just imagine, all this for 20 years he's put in, is going to go up in smoke because Esau is going to come and take it from him. Can you see this? Can you see this? This is what's happening. This is the story. This is a, 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 a spiritual man wanting the things of God rather than Esau who did not want the things of God, who hated his birthright. And this is what the law wants us to do. He wants us, even though those situations, don't forget they were twins. Don't forget they were twins. But one was a spiritual side and one, and one, was, a, uh, one was an earthly side. Of course, that's, that's the story of it. And sometimes people uh, want the best from God and they can't get it because they're in the flesh. The greatest mistake that people make is trying to live the Christian life in the old man, in the flesh. You can't do it. You see, Jacob had a desire for God. Esau did not. He did not. He was a man of the field. He was a man, uh, he was a, a mighty hunter. He was, a, as it was, a, 
uh, a cunning man, a cunning man. You see, you see the contrast between these two people. One was a plain man, one was a, a cunning hunter, you know, like Rambo or something like that. One who wanted to please everything, uh, so do everything to please his father. And really, it's not pleasing our, that earthly father what matters, it's pleasing our heavenly father. Okay, I'm getting excited, but there you go. So anyway, he, uh, he, he's hiding behind the rock and a man comes to rest, rest, wrestle with him for the day. And the man wrestles with him. And of course, what he does is get him, he can't beat him or they can't beat each other. And, and what it is, is, God is coming. I've had enough of Jacob. I want to do something with Jacob. I want to do something in Jacob before I can do something with. Because if you don't get this sorted out now, You'll stay where you are. It's as simple as that. Of course, he wrestles with him, doesn't he? And, he's, and eventually, it was coming daytime. And, and what he has, he, he couldn't, uh, he, there was no, he couldn't get, I think it, I think it was really a 50-50 ball, as they say. And what happens then, he says, the, the angel says, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Now, Jacob can't tell him his name. God, have you ever been like that? You can't say I'm Jacob, I'm a some planter. I'm just a person who, uh, as it was, tries to get the best out of everything, or the best out that I can do out of everything, and not the best which God wants for me. And there's a big difference. In matter of fact, there's a mighty difference. Of course, the angel says, what's your name? He won't say it, and, that, and then uh, he says to him, he says, you, he says, not, you're not, your name is not Jacob, but Israel. And thou shalt have thou art a prince, and thou shalt have power with God and with man. Before he had power with men. But now, because God's something in him, God is, is, is a fact he's got power with God and with man. And that's what it's all about. And what does he do? You know, something we used to say when we were kids, I don't know, <laughs> we used to be wrestling and fighting, we used to say, What's your name? And we get, get him in our lock, arm locker, What's your name? And if they said what the name was, we let them off. If we didn't, we didn't. You see what I'm saying? And that's it. He said, you know, I'm sure he got it through gritted teeth. My name's Jacob. He identified who he was. And sometimes we do have to do that. Identify who we are, but not, you know, what the law wants to do something in us and to bless us and to help us. What happens? He gets up. And he sent all the other. Don't forget, he's saying if that people get attacked, Leah, the other lot will uh, escape. But now he goes at the front of them. He goes down over the brook, and the and, and and Esau is coming towards him. He said, "Well, you're four hundred people." And I believe this is what I believe, just as he did with Laban, because God will do anything to fulfil His promise to you. And to, he, to what the Lord wants to do in your life. Absolutely 100%. And he's coming, Jake, uh, Esau, with 400 men. And he, he, Jacob, Israel, see, because he's got a change of nature, starts to bow. As he's going towards Esau, he starts to bow. Starts to bow. And you know something? Esau says, that's not Jacob. Because Jacob never bows to anybody. And sometimes, I'll tell you something, friends, when God's something to do, we bow. We bow and say, Lord, I've done it. I've tried the broken fountains, Lord. But ah, the water's failed. And the Lord wants it, I'll do you go across that. And of course, that's what he did. And then he said, I'll kill him. I'll kill him. He just got kill him. I'll kill Jacob. And the Lord says, you touch Jacob, I'll spatter the lot of you. You don't believe that? I believe it with all my heart because it's God's purpose and plan for your life. And, and Esau said, what are these, all this cattle? They're a present for my Lord Esau. What about the other, my father? Children, this and the other. He said, he said what about this? this? He, Esau said, I've got enough. I've got enough. Just take them back. The old Esau would have took everything back. They would have took it all back. But he says, no. He said, you have them. See what I'm saying? The old Esau. See what I'm saying now? There's a change of nature. 
And Christianity is a change of nature. It's not the old nature. It's the new nature in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just look at what he says. And uh, Esau says, come to, uh, and we'll guide you and keep you. The Lord's guiding him and kept him. He won't go Esau's way now. He won't go the way of the old life. He'll go the way of the new life. And he goes that way. Esau goes that way. And he goes that way. And he makes himself booths for the cattle and things like that. So what I'm trying to say is this. You see then what I'm saying? The Lord is wanting you to keep away from the Esau's of this world. To keep away from the old man. To get that new life in Christ. That he might make a change to your life. Because that's what it did. In, uh, in his life. Now let's have a look. He did something for him. He's done something in him. Now he's doing something with him. Isn't he? And really later on. What happens. Uh, Simeon. Simeon I think. And Diana. His, 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 the daughter had been raped. And what they do. They, they kill all the people. They kill all the people of the city. And, and, and Jacob is absolutely mad. He says. They're going to finish us all off. But the Lord said to Jacob, he said he put the fear of God on all the cities round about. You see what I'm saying, friend? He's moving into a new realm. And sometimes we've got to move into that new realm in the things of God. What did he send him back to? He says, go back to Bethel. And sometimes we've got to go back to Bethel. Where God is. And we've forgot about it all the time. We've all done it. But you've got to go back to Bethel and a journey and the fear of God came on all the cities round the way. You see, friend, God is still with him. So he's there. He didn't do everything right. This is what I want to know. No. Did he do everything? No, he didn't. Did the Lord want him to do everything right? No, he said, well, I'll back him. He has made an agreement with me to follow me and give me 10% and I will back him. And sometimes in your Christian life, God will back you. I don't care what it is. We have prayer the God who rules the universe, friend. He's not just like the government of this country or the government of America. They're nothing. They're nothing in God's eyes. They are absolutely nothing. But our God is a great God. He's mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to baptize with the Holy Spirit. If you just let him take you into a new way, into new ideas and new thoughts and new, uh, uh, the things of God. Instead of the things of Esau, when he's going around just to please his father and, 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 and that, and making a mistake because it's the old man. We want to please our heavenly father and to take us into great things which will, we don't know of. He said, the Bible says that you might not, that you don't know of. I'll take you to places and I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you even unto the end of the age. So whatever difficulty you've been in at the moment, whatever it is, you know, it says of um, uh, people in the Bible, you know, the fact that uh, the, the things that happened in their life, they were to bring them forward in the things of God. Job, Job, he, he, he took everything off of him and gave him twice as much back. But the thing was, what it was with Job, he said, the thing that I feared has come upon me. Sometimes we've got to get away from that fear thing. We've got to get into what God wants us to do and help us and do us good. And when you walk down the street, they always say this, the Lord walks down the street and he's with you and he's at the side of you, he's in you. He's around you, all around you, the everlasting arms of Almighty. I've never thought it like that. Well, that's how it is. Because the point is, we have to go on into the things of God, even though we go, uh, uh, as it were, Jacob. And for 20 years, he, he went on it and God did something for him. It was only when God did something in him that he could do something with him. And he could really show him that things of the real things of the Almighty God who wants to help you. And bless you and do you good. So listen to that. If that will help you. It might, it might not be everything about it. But I'll tell you. It's how God will bless our life. It's his way. And not our way. Thank you for listening today. God bless you.